All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As talks about title today's video, here to showcase the best value for every attribute rating in NBA 2K24. So, in case you guys are new to this concept, I did it in 2K23 and 2K22. We go through every single attribute from close shot to driving lay, dunk, all the way down to the shooting, playmaking, and defense categories, even the physicals, and tell you what every best attribute rating is as far as the value you're going to get out of it for 2K24. So, we're going to get straight into this video. I hope you all enjoy. If you do, for drop a like, sub if you turn on noties, all good stuff, and like always, try to one to 2,000 likes. So, Starting us off with close shot, 65 is going to be as far as you can go without forcing up your mid range or three free throw or three pointer or anything like that for inside builds. However, I will say, obviously, when it comes to being an inside build, you do kind of like to have a high close shot. But if you've seen my videos recently of the power of the standing dunk meter or just standing dunks in general, you may feel a little bit more inclined into being okay with that 65 close shot. But as far as what's going to give you good badge values and stuff like that, I believe 84 is your real like nice threshold and good point that you're going to be trying to hit. Now, with a lot of these rating caps and stuff like that, you guys are going to see that unfortunately, you're just going to have to look for that green check mark that you can see if you want to sort of solidify it by your own merit rather than just mine. Because you can see things like Fast Twitch and Masher and Pro Touch, Giant Slayer, stuff like that popping up, but you don't see Dream Shake even though this is enough close shot to get it at a very high level and not to mention you know you don't get hook specialist either quote unquote but the problem is in some of these you need other attribute ratings to be able to get them like post control for instance so if you guys want to just trust what i have to say about stuff like this we can do so but also i could like maybe you know go up to certain rating thresholds that i believe also match and, and go well with it like for instance if you pair 85 post control with obviously the fact that you can get unpluckable and all types of different badges that you need with this level of threshold as well pair that with 84 close shot you get the gold hook specialist same with 84 gets you whistle it'll get you all types of other badges and stuff like that too but again it's going to be unfortunate for this type of a video because you're gonna have to just believe what i tell you rather than for me to like be able to show everything super quick and efficiently and i think that the majority of the people who are watching this video would prefer if i go through pretty quick and efficiently so Anyway, we are going to continue on with that, but just want to let you guys know as far as like what to expect of this video. Moving along to the layup though, I'm going to vouch for 70, but very begrudgingly. I think this is the bare minimum that I would go for. As far as another threshold to hit, 77 is going to give you the float game on, on gold, as well as get scooper and acrobat up a level as well at that 76 threshold. So I do vouch for 77. And then this DeMar DeRozan layup package that I really do like a lot. However, it's more for like slashers. You can get euros into like good dunks. It's just a crazy big euro package essentially. It comes with that 78 driving lay as well. So if you're interested in that at all, this would be your best value. But then you even have things like 80 that can give you a lot of different other layup packages and it gives slithery on silver if you happen to be someone that's not investing in your driving dunk. Long story short, what I'm trying to backtrack to here is at a lot of different varying levels between 76 77 and then 78 or even 80 <laughs> there's a lot of good levels to hit so i am going to vouch for 77 for most people who just want the badge levels pretty good and that's where you could be satisfied with so to give you a very like straightforward answer i would say that as well but maybe if we want to talk the really good ones 88 is going to give you float game plus as you can see fearless finisher does not show you currently but if we go down to the strength and just go ahead and we'll just max it out for the sake of showing you this if you go ahead and have like pretty solid strength, all you need is 67 for that. You can get gold fearless finisher with the 87 driving lay. So uh, getting 88 along with that is good for flow game in my opinion as well. So for driving dunk, the lowest we're going to vouch for is 65. At 65, you get athletic hangs off one. It's a really, really good package. I've seen my boys, whether it's Tonic or Kitchen or even like Bonnie on his lockdown build as well. I've advocated for 65 dunk on all those builds for all my boys. And you can see them actually get those dunk packages in game. And I've seen it firsthand as well. So it's a really crazy package. If you want to check it out for yourself before you make a build that has something like this, definitely feel free to. But I'm, I'm here to tell you guys right now, it's the best dunk in the game as far as efficiency and quickness, and you get it with no limitless takeoff requirements anymore because you don't have that in the bat, in the game anymore. So <laughs> here we are with an even lower requirement for the best dunk in the game in terms of efficiency and cheese, quote unquote. But anyway, as far as the next cap I would say to go to, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't like the lower requirement of like contact dunks. I know you can get them at 87, but the two footers are terrible. Do not go with an 87 driving dunk. If you plan to get contacts, invest into the 89 at least. And then at that point, if you are going with a dunk type build, I would still also advocate for the 90 driving dunk to be able to get that uh, precision dunker on gold as well. So I do very much so want you guys to lean toward the 89 driving dunk over the 87 though. It's two points of investment and I believe those pro off ones are so much better than the pro off twos. 
So I definitely advocate for the whole 89 driving dunk. And I believe you need 78 vertical with that as well. So just keep that in mind. Not to mention, obviously, you need 75 vertical to even get silver posterizer. So I would definitely advocate for the whole 78 vert if you're going with a build that has the 89 driving dunk. Anyway, moving into standing dunk. You will not believe this one, but 40. 40 is looking beautiful. And also, I did mean to backtrack a little bit right here too. 50 will give you the Mono Ginobili dunk package as well, and it'll still be performed, but it's not to the same extent of like greatness of that 65 that the Athletic Hangs Off one will give you. So those are like the, you know, low, low ones where you could go settle with something like this and still be able to perform dunks at a very doable rate, but it's not going to be the perfect animation or anything like that. So with 40, you get one standing dunk package. With 45, you get two standing dunk packages. After that, you have to go quite a bit a ways up. I believe it's 65 or 70 for the next animation. And they're not even better than the, than the ones you get with the, like the basic uh, one-handers and basic two-handers off uh, the 40 and 45 standing dunk you get. So I'm here to vouch very heavily for 40 or 45 standing dunk. If you are talking, let's say like an inside big man, obviously you're gonna be more inclined to go for 80 for the pro, pro contact bigs, but at 81, you get Precision Dunker on Silver and Rise Up on Silver as well. So I would definitely say 81 is the threshold to hit if you want to be a lower standing dunk type big that's going to be getting standing contact dunks. Also, don't pay attention to the build that we have or anything like that, like the PG listed at 6'8", 230, and 7'6", seven, seven, wingspan. It's not being applied to here. We're being theoretical with the builds and we're just talking the rating and the badges that come with it, period. Simple as that. So if you then wanted to go to a higher level, 90 is obviously looking beautiful as far as what you're going to get with that. You get the elite big man contact dunks paired with the 75 vertical. And then obviously you have gold precision dunker and gold rise up being achieved right there. If you go to 92, you get the gold fast twitch. I don't know if it's worth the investment or not. You could go ahead and do that if you would like, but 90 is looking pretty good for me and what I've tested it with my builds. So absolutely vouching for the 90 if you're going for the high thresholds. For post control, this is where we're going to kind of like go more into a high level good value. So I'm not here to tell you what like good value, low post score, like low post control is or anything like that. In a way, like there's so many things that vary with this. So like, let's go ahead and upgrade the mid range real quick. And I just want to show you what like things can be related to this. So we have post fade phenom, hook specialist, you know, like drop stepper, all this stuff. There's a ton of things that are related to post control. And for that matter, post control is a very good value rating type in that in that type as well. So explaining that a little bit further it's very cheap to upgrade this all the way like if we go from let's say like 50 50 post control all the way up to 85 you're gonna see it cost us like one overall point and then even going up to 92 it's only gonna cost us two overall points but in that same breath you get gold unpluckable achieved you get you know your back down punisher dream shake drop stepper all that stuff hook specialist it's a ridiculous type of rating to be upgrading because it's so cheap and it's so good value in in general so i'm vouching that if you're going to put post control on your build go to 85 it gets you the silver unpluckable you're going to be able to get drop stepper hook specialist post fade phenom all that stuff at an elite level same with the post spin as well and there's not much after that until the 92 so if you go from 85 all the way up to 89 you don't gain anything and then at 90 as you can see you gain dream shake and post spin technician but i would vouch more for the 92 off that gold unpluckable that is something that you're seeing a lot of these 6 8 pgs you know uh, people that are running the five out like joe knows included or let's say for instance maybe just a, a post scoring lockdown for instance it's becoming a thing believe it or not <laughs> for sure but anyway it's very possible to go with the 92 post control just for the golden pluckable and even if you have low ball handle like only 42 or something like that or as you can see like that's what you would get with the post control being that high you can still do great dribble moves with 40 and we'll talk about that in a second as well and i've made videos on that already but yeah 85 and 92 post control looking like amazing value in this game also, if you guys didn't know, I'm pairing up with the NBA 2K Lab this year. So you can use code Laker for 20% off at checkout at their website. That's NBA2KLab.com. On this website is all types of really good statistical jump shot information. You can also test the jumpers on their website too. Plug the controller straight into your phone or to your PC. You can get early, green, late. It'll tell you where you need to adjust on that jump shot. Or if you don't know what jumper you want to run, you just go to their jump shot recommender. You punch in your height, the jump shot rating that you're working with, and then based on the milliseconds of timing that you get, it'll recommend you a jump shot so again if you want to use code laker for 20 percent off at checkout that's nba2klab.com appreciate you guys and we'll get back to the video all right so respec in the build a little bit right here as you can see we are on a 6-6 point guard now and again it doesn't matter so don't pay too much attention to it but let's go ahead and talk about some of these badges that you can get with the mid-range game so with the mid-range let's go ahead and take this three-pointer down quite a bit and let's just show what you can get with the mid-range so as you can see at 86 you're able to get open looks on gold and 
you know, comeback kid on Hall of Fame, which I guess is, we don't really care about that too much, though. But also post fade phenom on Hall of Fame as well. So if you have that 85 post control combo pairing that with the 86 mid range, you get that Hoff post fade phenom. That's a huge deal. And then if you go up two more levels, you're looking at Green Machine and Space Creator both going up. And then at 89, you get blinders. At 90, you get Deadeye. I think 90 is what we're vouching for as great value mid range. And again, this is extremely cheap. Like if we go down on the build from 90 mid all the way down to, let's say, 60. I mean, I guess that's not like an insane sort of deal because it's still five overall points. And we're not talking like 90 mid range for point guards, to be fair, because when it comes to a PG, if you're upgrading your three pointer all the way to like 96 or something like that, go figure. I didn't even put the wingspan low enough, but oh well, we'll just do that right here. So if you were to be like a point guard that's going all the way to 96 three pointer so you're gonna get already limitless blinders agent uh dead eye all on gold you can't really do anything with your mid-range at that point like you're gonna see the only thing that goes up is mini magician as far as some of these badges go and that's not gonna be a big deal of an investment in terms of badge points it's only gonna be for the utilization of the rating now i'm still gonna tell you guys mid-range is very good in this game too so definitely still feel okay with upgrading that but my mid-range talk is more talking about like post scores and uh, let's say like post locks kind of combo that I'm talking about or let's say spot up shooters that are just playing lockdown in general because again if I know you might not think you're going to utilize that mid-range game like crazy but upping your mid is going to allow you to beat an elite shooter just in general off your three-pointer only being let's say you know 79 or something like that or 78 it's going to still allow you to get a lot of these badges that you should not get with this level of three-point rating so midi I'm vouching for 90. If you're someone that doesn't really care about shooting mid-range game, obviously minimum. Like, let's say you're going with that 96 three-pointer, just chill at 81 mid. Simple as that, right? I mean, you're not going to be shooting a ton of mid-ranges if that's not in your style and it's not how you play. Doesn't mean that's how everybody has to play, but obviously that's just what we're looking at in that regard. So for a three-pointer now, let's go ahead and talk about some three. So I believe 86 is your best value as far as that's going to go again we'll go down on the mid-range just to not show any badges that you can't actually get but at 85 three-pointer you get the bronze limitless at 86 you get silver agent three those are big deals in terms of like being a ball handler type shooter that is going to be a lot of you guys who are watching this video obviously when it comes to how you want to create your point guard or just how you want to create your build in general 85 three-pointer and 86 they're very hittable rates in this game too i mean it's what a lot of people you can find them running whether it's you know as like even a two-way spot up kind of type build or again just pretty much any point guard build you're looking at now there are thresholds when it comes to this stuff for sure like it really moves in increments of limitless because there just so happens to be a lot of different levels to hit even in that limitless like kind of tied things as well so we have the 92 three-pointer that goes to the limitless on silver and you're looking at deadeye and claymore going up off that 92 three-pointer and then you still have 94 that is very viable as well but then you could also be like well why not 96? I mean, look at this stuff. I'm I'm vouching for 96, well over 94. I think you either settle for, settle for 92 or go up to 96. And personally, I'm not even really here to actually vouch for 92 because I just feel like what you lose out on in terms of everything else is, is pretty serious. And I know vouching for 96 is a pretty crazy thing to do on a video like this because we're trying to talk good value and stuff like that. But I truly do believe... I think it's more along the lines of like 86, 96. Uh, that's, my, that's my true take. If you want to consider the 92 as like a buffer zone in that aspect as well, where you get things like Deadeye, Claymore, Limitless, all at that level, I think it's a good value. But like in terms of what you lose out on between 92 and 96, look at this. So at 93, we get open looks. That's not a big deal. But at 94, as you're going to see, we get Guard Up, Space Creator, and Corner Specialist, and the Whistle all to go up as well. So, and then even Agent 3 as well. So 94 big re big threshold to hit and then 95 you got catch and shoot green machine and at 96 you get limitless range as well and i think this is the type of investment you want to go for if you're looking to be an elite guard that can shoot from deep and i mean we've we've heard a lot of talk on the whole buff or, or patch i should say of the limitless shooting i'm here to tell you guys right now i mean i'm still seeing point guards function at a really good rate with this 96 three-pointer and they're, they're letting that thing fly so I'm still very much so vouching for that 86 or 96. That's what we're looking at, in my opinion. Now, for a free throw, I believe 71 is the threshold that's going to be pretty nice. Not to mention, I guess it goes pretty well hand in hand with that 96 three pointer. But with the free throw at 71, you get the free points on bronze. But I will say, normally I vouch for like you know low free throw ratings in these in these value videos back in the day because like you can hit with 50 at a ridiculous rate in previous previous games. This game, not the case. There does not seem to be a very friendly green window on free throws. I'm sure you've seen this in the rec from your teammates. I'm sure you've experienced this yourself if you know what I'm talking about, where 
the green window does not feel very friendly it doesn't seem like it snaps green very easily and i honestly would vouch for the silver level of free points at that 80 as like my true threshold to hit in terms of if you want to be like a really good free throw shooter 71 again can still be decent with that bronze but you know we're looking for thresholds of 10s in the first place anyway so like 70 feels good and then 80 feels good and then obviously 90 feels good too and it just so happens to be that that's where all the threshold points are for free points besides obviously you know 71 for bronze instead of actually 70 but you know what i'm saying so i would function in those you know levels of 10 of the 70 80 90 club anyway moving along to the playmaking category we now have pass accuracy so for pass hack, I'm going straight up 77. I think this is the best level you can hit. With the 75, obviously, you're unlocking a couple packages, but not a lot of them are super crazy. I think Sabonis is, like, the best one you can get at 75, but none seems to be, like, the best thing you can run besides if you get Halliburton at, like, 89. But anyway, for the low-level pass accuracy, I would vouch for 77 over 75, though. As you can see, at 76, you get Relay Passer. At 77, you get the Bronze Neal. Don't sleep on the power of Bronze Badges in this game. Needle Thread is a very hard one to retain because of how little it pops up, obviously, but it will save you in some situations. Lanes are pretty bad in this game, I will say too, so to make that even compound even worse for people can be pretty good. And again, you're not not—you're never going to have to do any work in terms of retaining that bronze badge right there. It's not a problem at all, and Relay Passer is not hard to keep on silver either. So I definitely vouch for 77 as my best threshold to hit, and we'll keep it about as simple as that. I know like a lot of you guys will be able to look into a lot of things like, let's say the 91 threshold is another one I'm a big fan of, of that silver bailout, gold needle, and Hoff special delivery, even though that's probably the hard one to retain, special delivery being that is. But yeah, I mean, you could definitely vouch for that 91. I know a lot of people vouch for 89 as well, because it's where you get Halliburton and you get Dimer and Relay Passer right there too. So. I don't want to make this video take forever, but I do want to give people informative, you know, information that they're going to want and need when clicking on a video like this as well. So I do apologize for those who think this video is taking a little too long, but <laughs> obviously, like I said, we're here to inform people for sure. So moving along to the ball handle caps at 40, you get the normal SIGs. Same goes for speed with ball 40, 40 ball handle, 40 speed with ball gives you the normal dribble style and the normal SIGs and everything that you need with that. I made a video strictly on the power of 40 ball handles. So if you want to check that out, feel free to. It goes a lot more in depth into the whole 40 versus 60 versus, you know, what you get otherwise in terms of the ball handle. And again, speed of the ball, 40 is looking really good too. So if you're a lockdown out there that wants to go with like a mediocre ball handling type build, yet you ended up upgrading your pass accuracy to 76 anyway, or 77, you're going to be looking at those packages that I'm talking about. And you can go ahead and use that video as reference for really good dribble moves you can still do functionally. Now, here's the thing though, as far as what gets forced up, your speed with ball doesn't really get forced up by anything other than your speed. So depending on what you made as a lockdown, sometimes that sits at about like 35, like or 33 for that matter, even with like 83 speed locks at like 6'8". So you're not always looking at a, a speed with ball that got forced up to 40. So you're gonna have to upgrade that yourself in most situations if you're a lockdown build like that, or even a center for that matter sometimes as well. So if you want that normal dribble style that's doing that crazy blowout dribble that everybody's seeing, I mean, <laughs> you definitely want to go for something around the 40 speed with ball. I shouldn't even say around 40 speed with ball. It's literally 40 speed ball so sorry about that but <laughs> anyway moving along 75 speed ball is gonna be what you really want for a lot of the decent ball handler dribble styles so like if we're talking you know six eight six seven hybrid type point guard builds in a sense like the magic johnson lamella ball type dudes that are gonna be like a tall oversized pg 75 speed balls is what's looking really good you can get that on the dot at pretty much every six eight type build unless you're going really really heavy but 75 will give you Magic Johnson dribble style. I made a video specifically on that. If you want to check that out as well, too, it's looking really nice, man. And you have to run offhand with it. But along with 75 speed ball, it gives you the hyper drive. And also, I believe if we go up on that ball handle to 81, and I should mention this too, technically, I guess. So 81 ball handle was the next threshold I had as far as the ball handling stuff for the, you know, 6'8 type builds right here. So with the 75 speed ball it's exactly what you need to get the speed booster and hyperdrive once you have that ball handle requirement and as you can see you need 81 ball handle as well for that and not to mention 80 has a lot of good sigs not to mention it comes with that unpluckable silver too so this is a really good spot to hit if you're a 6867 type hybrid dribbler and I don't really think you have too many that you need above that. 83 gives a really good uh, behind the back with Jamal Murray, but that's about it. And then 85 will give you some more SIGs, but it's not necessary in my opinion. I think 81 is the value rating you're looking to hit, and that's my true stance on that. All right, so for interior defense, I will change the build real quick and get this to a higher cap. But what I want to talk about first and foremost is that if you're a small point guard, 
and you think interior defense is useless, I A, challenge you to change your opinion on that because I think it absolutely matters in terms of guarding back doors or putting your hands up and like playing defense on the interior in general. And whether you think you can't play interior D just because you're small or your wingspan's too small, that is A, not true. And B, go ahead and take a look when you upgrade your build next time and you're looking at what you need to upgrade, go ahead and just look at what it's going to cost you. Let's, I'll, I'll cut to something real quick. All right, so go ahead and take a look at this. Now, what I could do with this extra rating is go ahead and put my mid-range up to like 82. I guess I have a close shot here that I can take down as well. But you get what I'm saying. I can take the mid-range rating to 82. I can take the pass sack up to 78. I can get one more on that, right? Or maybe my prim D could go up one more. But take a look at what we can do with interior defense. Mind you, those ratings are very minimal, like in terms of what we got off that. Now, look at this, man. We get all the way up to 56 interior D. It could even go more, but it forces our strength up, unfortunately. So 55, 56, whatever you want to call it, that's 30 more. 30 interior defense at the cost of one pass sack or one mid-range. So don't sleep on this. I'm telling you guys, it's a very slept on thing in terms of what you're upgrading on your build. If you're settling for 25, look into what tw what 55 is going to do for you. Or maybe you're a taller build that maybe wants to go more along the lines of like 55 strength for the gold clamps or something like that. Look into your interior defense, bro. It's, it's not useless. I promise you it's worth looking into. And definitely give it some consideration but anyway we're gonna go ahead and talk about more of the defensive stuff so let's go ahead and get on like a, a build that can play a little more defense here so with the interior d we'll talk about that first and come back to prim and steel so because i just want to talk about kind of what you can get with like a build that is looking more along the lines of something like this right where you can like crazy block interior and defense and stuff like that again do not think i'm talking about this exact build i'm just saying i'm looking at these ratings right here so with interior defense, I want to maybe mention along the lines of, let's talk about the levels of anchor. So you need 72 interior defense for that silver anchor. You can see you get it right here. Same with it gives you workhorse if you happen to not have enough primity for that. Or maybe you're looking at around the 77 interior defense that gives you the gold anchor. I advocate for going in the levels of interior defense that will get you your anchor level. And then if you want to go ahead and invest a little bit more into things that will maybe get you like post lockdown, which again, you need other ratings for, and it makes this video impossible to showcase at a, at a proper rate, but you get what I'm saying. Go to levels of badges and whatever sounds good to you, go for it. I have 85 myself personally. I'm not here to give you a specific rating for this one though. I'm just here to say, go in the level of what gives you badges or what feels comfortable to you. Cause there's no perfect threshold with it when it comes to something like this it all depends on your role it depends on you know what you're looking for out of your build in terms of what you can do with it or you know again the levels of anchor as well so anyway skipping over to the block and we'll come to the the rebounding after that as well and then we'll get to the perimeter d and steel after because again i'm just gonna tweak the build a little bit after that point all right so i guess we kind of already vouched for what we need out of the block rating as far as the best value though i'm gonna tell you guys i think 87 is the really good value spot to hit i think it's really where you feel you're getting the most bang for your buck out of the rating investment 92 starts to get a little bit expensive not super crazy but like it's moving it a little bit and obviously you'd want to raise your into deep into your defense for that anchor level but 87 is where you're going to be getting that silver anchor and i think that's the good threshold to hit if you're playing a center you can hold it down decent if you're playing lockdown and you want to be a freak in terms of the, the versatility you have with it 87 block is what you're looking at besides that though if you want to have that gold anchor obviously like i said 7 77 into your defense and 92 block simple easy as that now for rebounding we have in my opinion 85 is going to be the best threshold in terms of the value where we're looking at Gold box out B, silver rebound chaser. It, it just in general plays pretty well too. I can advocate for 83 myself. I couldn't quite afford 85 on my main build as far as like the slasher build, but I definitely feel okay with 83 and to add box out beast to it would be a great idea as well. Now, besides that, obviously we're looking at 93, which would then be hall of fame box out beast if you have the strength to match. So you're then looking at Hoff box out beast paired with the gold rebound chaser that you get at 92. So. In terms of what you want out of your rebound ratings, I just say 85, 93, one of the two of them. Simple as that. If you can go for a, if you can only afford like 83, feel okay with it. If you can somehow only afford 92 and you can't get 93, still feel somewhat okay with it. So that's what we feel as far as the rebound ratings. All right. So as far as what we feel are good value ratings for the defense, as much as you might believe, I'm gonna tell you something like 99 steel because pluck steels are broken. I'm not gonna be telling you that because. One rating of steel of 98 to 99 is going to cost you three overall. And then if you go down one more, it's another overall. And 96 is going to give you right stick, ripper, interceptor, and glove on gold. So 
96 is looking good for that, but we're not really here to advocate for that either. I just want to show you guys how ridiculous this stuff is. Not to mention, if you look at Prim D, look at this one. You go down one Prim D, 98 to 99, that's three overall points right there, bro. That's insane. So, anyway, let's talk about the best value ratings for the Prim. So, at 72, you get the you get the fast feet and you get the challenger on bronze. So, that's what we're going to be looking at as far as that goes. I'll go ahead and take down other things as well that aren't really related that you technically won't get. So like you're seeing workhorse come from the interior defense, even though that's not true. But at night at 72, you get bronze workhorse and fast feet. And then, like I said, at that 71, you get the challenger as well. So 72 is really good if you want to play like mediocre defense on a guard build or something like that. And you still want to contribute for your team. You don't want to be the guy that's coming out here with 52 Prim D and you're useless and you can hardly get a contest. And you're the guy that upgrade your Prim D very last on your build. So you actually have 25. It's very bad. Do not do that. <laughs> and it's, it's not a good look. But anyway. As far as the good value ratings for Prim D, 85 is looking really good. You get that silver clamps and the and the challenger and stuff like that. You actually get challenger 82, but you get what I'm saying. You can see you get fast feet, pick dodger, all that stuff, clamps, all that at 85. And it looks like a very moderately decent perimeter defender if you look at all these badges you can get that are tied to it. So I advocate for that for sure. And then the elite level of perimeter defense that I'm advocating for is 94. So it's still very good value. It doesn't become like a crazy cost investment. Like you will see everything after it becomes, I mean, that's four ratings, one rating, another rating, another two ratings right there. And then, you know, one more rating right there. Anything after 94 feels very expensive, yet 94 is a very good value. You're looking at that gold challenger or the hall of fame challenger gold clamps. So 93 prim gold clamps, 94 prim hall of fame challenger. It's really good threshold. I advocate for those 100%. Now, with steel at 60, you're going to be getting that bronze interceptor, and that's the bare minimum level I would advocate for if you're trying to play any type of passing lane in this game. Besides that, if you are, you know, below 60, don't even touch your X button, in my opinion. <laughs> that's how I have kind of functioned in this game, and I actually like playing conservative defense in this game as well. But anyway, past 60, 85 is a le another level where you're getting a lot of these badges. So we got 81 steel for the interceptor. We got 84 for the right stick ripper and 85 for glove. All that on silver. Again, if you wanted to go with a moderately decent defender, you could be looking at 85 prim, 85 steel. You're looking at silver badges everywhere. So there you go. And the last threshold that happens to be a very good number to hit is also the 91. So as you can see at 89 interceptor, 90 right stick ripper, 91 glove. It's a very good level to hit if you want to be a more than adequate defender and you wanted to maybe just up that steel from 85 to 91, you could still be looking at something like this with the prim and steel combo of the 85-91. It looks really good. Definitely say that's a pretty good look. So moving along the physicals, this is where I'm not going to be very specific with it. I'm just going to tell you guys, whatever matches badges still works out for you, but also do not just not max out your speed for your build unless you're a small guard. If you're someone that's above six foot seven and you're not maxing out your speed, you're insane in my opinion. You want to absolutely get the most you can out of your build in terms of your height to speed ratio. It's insane how freakish you will move in comparison to the other goofballs that didn't max out their speed at like a, like if you went seven foot one, seven foot in general, but you decided to still go 30 speed for some reason, that's crazy talk in my opinion. You want to max out whatever speed you can get at those heights because it's just going to make you move in a freakish way. Again, I mean, seven footers, even with crazy, crazy weight investment of even getting the 90 strength right here, can still get 67 speed. You don't even want to know how much better a 67 speed seven footer is going to look than a 40 speed seven footer. It's not a good look to go this low. So, or even this low, or even this low. Uh, there's no point. There's no point in going this low, bro. Just max it out. Simple. But besides that acceleration obviously you want to tie this into the fast feet badge paired with like other things that you can get in terms of speed booster and whatnot and obviously for a small guard it's more important as well so as a lockdown you just need the bare minimum that you can get for the fast feet which ironically if you wanted to be a heavy guy that's happens to be six nine you can't even get you need at least 70 for bronze and you'll i believe need 77 or 70 no it's like 73 for silver something like that so you should be good but either way for the most part what you want to do with your physicals as i said is just either max them out or play according to your position now with these two coming up right here, that definitely varies a little bit more. So for strength, you move in these thresholds of about three right here, where you're looking at immovable enforcer at 82, you got brick wall 83, and then bulldozer at 84. So depending on your play style, I will say 84 is looking really good. However, if you don't have any slash game in you and you're not even a screen setter either,
either. You just want to be a lock. 82 is looking, looking like a good threshold. But then after that, even going further, 90 is going to be looking at a movable enforcer and brick wall on gold. So if you're an inside center or something like that, or just a center in general that wants to be a big body and you want to still be able to get bumpy with that immovable enforcer as well, 90 strength is exactly for you. So my two thresholds are 84 and 90. Simple as that. Vertical is going to be a lot more tied into your contact dunks, obviously. 80 is a pretty good level to hit if you're just trying to be some type of like lock that wants to at least play well. Or as a center, I would abs absolutely advocate for you going at least 80. Probably more along the lines of like 83 if you want to be a freak like jumping out of the gym. But obviously when it comes to what you get vertical for, it's more along the lines of contact dunk packages. So you know i already mentioned to you guys like i believe you need 75 for the pro off two but you need 78 i think for the pro off one and then past that i think it's like 82 i don't know you can look into my slasher videos if you want if you care about vertical that much but obviously as i've mentioned you want to move in the increments of the animations when it comes to vertical and then also whatever just feels good too and then for stamina Honestly, bro, once again, it's the same thing. Like, look at look at the stamina investment in this. And I'll just go ahead and go down to where it, like, doesn't even influence other ratings. So, from minimum stamina all the way up to the max, it costs you one overall point, bro. And not even, really. Like, look at the green bar hardly moving at all. I, I Just max out your stamina, bro. There's no point in not doing it. If you have to shave off some points down to 95, go ahead and feel free to. Same with obviously it contributes to hands for days and workhorse and 94 feet. So if you're a six foot seven lock that wants to be full court pressing, you obviously need the 99 stamina to get the Hall of Fame 94 feet. Same with workhorse. So like I said, just just inspect your build a little bit. Look into what you need to do in terms of the badge thresholds. But and it literally shows you right here too. So it shouldn't be that hard. But I definitely advocate for high stamina. It's about as simple as that. So anyway. That is off video. I know this is a pretty big one, pretty long one, but it is what it is. Obviously, I'm trying to keep as many people informed as wanted to stay to the end of the video. So if you made it to the end of the video, put value in the comment shorts, porch me all the way through. Appreciate you guys watching. And a lot of you guys might know I'm sick right now too. So this is a this is a grind of a video right here to get through with my voice as is. But hey man, we're fighting it out. I really am like trying to do everything that we can, obviously in this early portion of the 2K24. And I appreciate anybody that's followed along and subbed or you know is new to the channel and is obviously watching the content and also all the you know old viewers and stuff like that that have been watching since a long time ago or maybe just last year anyway that's all video i hope you enjoyed if you made it to the end of the video put value in the comments short sports my through and like always tries one to two thousand likes i will keep you guys informed throughout the course of the year i usually do this video about three times every year and i just want to give a little bit of an update every like three or four months something like that so stay tuned for that i'll probably drop another one sometime around december and we'll probably you know resume that later in the year so anyway that's all for video hope you all enjoyed and that tady man peace